give you some direction. Okay? Okay, how is what? So today I'm going to break out a new standard with you. And the first thing I want to do is get your idea of what you think of when I bring out and I show you that bag. Yum. Yum. Yeah. Popcorn. Popcorn. What things come to mind? Movies. Yeah. Yum. Yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about a design project, okay, for the grand. You know about design. And I just want to think about some of the things we need to think about when we're doing design. Savannah. Shapes. Shapes. Size. 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 Awesome. You're arranging it. You're making this. What, who do you need to think about? Kate. The audience. The audience. A topic. A topic. That's huge. OK. So bringing up your Google Docs. Creative Design Project for the Grand Theater 75th Anniversary. Understanding and applying media, techniques, and process. Yeah, understanding is one of the verbs in the standard. Is there any other verbs there? Oh, we're looking at the Bloom's Taxonomy. So we're right here. Understanding, describing, and explaining. The learner will select media techniques and processes, performance indicator verbs. Select. Select. Verb. The learner will. Analyze. What else is nouns? Techniques. These are giving us our content of what we're actually working with. Communicating. Huge one. Yes. Very good. There. This is going to be the new kind of self-assessment form that we're really going to use a lot from here on out. Write some notes on the back of this about things that you remember that you've gone to over the years at the grant. I want you to kind of try to pull things out. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything, just anything. If popcorn is it. Things, what images might come to mind. Standards-based education has been around for more than 20 years. Um, however, we've really struggled with it as educators and how we actually put that together to uh, create a commitment to our students and our parents about what students will learn and what they'll be able to do. However, with 1422 on the um, horizon, uh, we are now have the imperative that we do need indeed to uh, move ahead with this. In our issue 24, we've taken a little different tact than in some other places. Um, after having spent years trying to develop curriculum around the learning results and then later trying to develop local assist assessment systems that tied in with those standards, um, this time around we're looking at it a little bit differently. Um, we've actually decided to adopt some programs that are already um, aligned with the Common Core Standards so that we can, instead of putting our time into curriculum development, we can put our time into instructional development and looking at instruction. Because the key to having a performance-based um, system is to be able to tailor instruction so that all students can meet those standards. We're actually um, looking at all content areas for the same um, type of approach where we feel that once we've established a curriculum, we're actually using Rubicon Atlas as a, a method of organizing our work, the body of work that we're creating across our 10 schools. And uh, through that, we are hoping to build collaboration between schools, between grade levels, um, between content areas. And um, with that in place, we will be re very poised to then look at differentiation of instruction to meet the needs of the individual students in attaining those standards. Definitely the unwrapping the standards has changed learning because now we're, that we're actually understanding what we're doing and the style we're, style we're drawing in, it doesn't, it's not a struggle for us, or at least me because I know what it's supposed to be like. Arts education especially lends itself very nicely to standards. I really think the, one of the biggest changes is the way that I am dialoguing with the students about the processes that we are using with unwrapping standards and, and using Bloom's technology and using the vocabulary that goes with standards-based education and student-centered. That 
vocabulary, terminology, I think it is changing the way that the students are really thinking about art, art experiences, how they come up with what they come up with. I really feel it is changing their mindset a bit. Um, so with creativity comes with that mindset change, mm -hmm. which I think is, is part of that. I think one of her talents is to integrate art with all the other disciplines. Uh, looking at the language and art and literacy is very different. We've never used it before, as well as the technology. Mm. So like Google Docs, we've, we haven't used that before. There is a connection with social studies because on we're learning about like Muslims and stuff and their churches are decorated with designs and we're also we do designs too and also in science because we have to draw like microbes and viruses. Blind contour drawing we have to do that and we had to do that in science when we were looking at microbes and cells. Always been a person who's seen myself as an art teacher, as a guide, not so much as a teacher, but guiding students to see. They're keeping things on their Google Docs so that I can, and sharing those documents with me so I can make comments on their docs, and that's ever growing into a, a, a good body of work so we can really have that dialogue outside of that one hour a week or 40 minutes a week that I see them. So I think that technology piece is really opening up a time um, to work with the constraints of such a short amount of time with students. Technology is part of their world. I have to embrace technology and what it means to their world. So anything that I can connect the art and keeping a good balance between art skills that are traditional art skills and art skills that are with technology is, is really um, an important piece because it's going to help them again in their world and in their 21st century skills. They need to have both and it is really about keeping that balance. And I found that technology has helped me with a large number of kids. It, it's a better organizer, a manager, um, you know, it's, it's, it's evolving. We used Photo Booth to take pictures of some of our artwork and we're putting it on Google Docs to make a folder and we're sharing it with Miss Snyder. Yeah, those 21st century skills are definitely helpful. They have the authentic you know, audience so that, and some of them are sprung from, you know, art and vice versa. They may write a a paragraph or a story and then illustrate it so it kind of appears in, in, in both. So in being in the same neighborhood, the same platform, okay, with the Googles, it, you can access it. I am always uh, checking in with students one-on-one, -on -one, walking around the classroom, really conferencing with them. Um, I use a lot of um, formative strategies, um, knowing where each student is. Unpacking the standards we are using. Using the Bloom's text. Yeah. Assessing ourselves in after our projects and seeing how we've improved. The assessment piece that, that I would refer to is on the Google Docs. It tells you things that you need to put in your artwork and it makes it a lot easier so you're not just sitting there with a question mark. Started with the studio habits of mind using that as a really uh, good self-assessment piece really starts them to be thinking more about their processes. Uh, assessment has been a, a difficult piece um, currently I teach in two schools I have about 350 students uh, my schools have had different grading systems in the past um, they're trying to come together with more common ground, but kindergarten through second grade has one system, third through fifth grade has a system, uh, sixth through eighth has the letter grades, the numerical grades. 
Um, so I have to take and put all of my grades in a way that matches and meets the demands of what my schools are asking for. Um, even though I teach a standards-based uh, curriculum, that grading doesn't look like that in the beginning on paper. So I keep a checklist of daily attendance and on a daily basis I give, give students whether a check, a check minus, a check plus, um, as to um, the concepts and the skills of that particular class. So we want them to understand how they're meeting a standard and, and to talk that language versus uh, an 85 or a 90 as to what that actually means to a student. Um, I think knowing what the standard is and knowing whether they met it or not is much more specific. And we've really started having that dialogue with the students. Um, and I think the students can explain what meeting the standards uh, are going to be and they can explain that to their parents to they can become our advocates the students can because they're going to understand because it's going to come from their experience. The arts um, to me are really ahead of ahead of the the pack in many ways because in the arts um, performance based assessment has always been the case. Um, we know that um, when students create a piece of artwork um, it's not finished until it's really finished and students are encouraged to keep working at it until they've um, reached a, a level of acceptance of that work. Um, likewise in drama or music or dance um, the the idea of being able to demonstrate your learning has always been at the heart of that uh, those disciplines. So uh, those other disciplines like math and social studies and science um, need to take a lesson from the arts in terms of how do we make sure that students are demonstrating their learning um, and not only demonstrating but demonstrating to a high level and um, with high quality products. We have the whole child. It's not just reading and math. It is their physical and their emotional and their mental and all of those um, aspects of children. And arts education is really vital to their, their growth as a person. We have started in this school with um, common language about standards. I think one of the most important things we need to do is not only talk with the students about this and what kind of learning being, what does learner-centered mean, but also to educate the parents in terms of what kinds of things they're going to see differently. Whatever it was that showcased their spark, their interest in a creative way. I was just standing back watching all of these different things happen I was watching kids make choices and decisions um, based on their own individual piece of being an artist that I really hadn't seen before this. Michael's sparks were music and welding and he created this guitar and when he presented, each student presented their piece of their spark to their classmates he even awed his peers. And he went one step further when he made this so that he could even play music. Things that contribute to a successful student-centered uh, classroom. Um, of course, you need uh, an ample space. Time. Students need time. Um, sometimes an hour is never, once a week is not enough time to teach all the things that we need to teach. Uh, class size can make a difference when you're really working with tools and, and trying to get tools and supplies out in a, in a timely manner and allow the process to start and allow the process to, to get to a place at the end of that time where the, where the students have felt successful. You need to have student choice. They need to be able to have that choice to really show their individual uniqueness. If we want to foster those creative skills that are inherent to each individual student, choice has to be a part of that. Um, funding, um, having the support of your colleagues um, really has to be a part of it. They, and to understand um, just why the arts are so, so important. Content and skills are just, they're there for me and, and I'm sharing that with the students. 
Well, it's allowed me to collaborate with so many more teachers across the state. It's kind of motivated me to, to do more research into student learning. Um, it's kind of fired up that what makes a great teacher? How am I going to, to help these students have the most successful experience? Because I've learned, I've shared resources, sharing documents, sharing methods. I don't feel that isolation that I felt prior to that. I have been able to share with my colleagues in the schools that I work with, um, my other arts teachers in my RSU, what unpacking the standards is really all about, um, sharing some resources with them. Um, I think that it has uh, given them some leadership that we really didn't have before. And I think that changes the mindset um, for students and administrators and parents when, when you really have that leadership there um, that can help us getting into 21st century skills and, and with students. You've got to have somebody breaking down some of the hard work to, to build that foundation piece that is going to be needed with our students. I have four very young beginning art teachers that, that are in my group in my RSU and we've had a lot of discussions about um, teaching art and where kids are today and what's coming down and I gave them a little piece of what I called wisdom the other day that I was where they were 20 years ago in main learning results just coming out and I was overwhelmed and I had a lot of anxiety but I thought about at that time I jumped on board and I got involved because the more that you know about what is going on in initiatives and reforms really helps you be a stronger, better, more effective teacher. In each and every one of those young teachers I see a spark and I see the light and the hope that they talk about when they talk about their students and the work they're doing with their kids. And it's that light and that spark that will get them through any initiative that they jump into and take hold with. Their logo that goes on most of their communicating anything that's going on. Um, 